Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. Welcome back to the show, John. Jim, pleasure to be back on the show. John, while everybody else was taking it off for Christmas in December, you were busy searching the resource juniors for new bottom fish ideas. Do any qualify for Discovery Watch right now? Jim, one of the ones that uh, caught my attention right off the start last week because they put out a press release is Norden Crown Metals Corp. Now, this company started in about late 2017 as a company called Boreal Metals Corp. And it was uh, created to acquire projects from EMX Royalty, the big uh, sort of royalty collecting company, which does a lot of homework assembling uh, projects in various areas where they have expertise, and then they farm them out to juniors who, you know, they get stock and some cash, and they usually clip a royalty, and the hope is that these juniors will end up making something of these projects. And at the time, the Boreal Group uh, was headed by uh, Pat Veris and one other individual who is no longer with the company, who was the president. The company crashed and burned at the end of 20. 20- 19 because the president ended up being uh, coming under charges uh, criminal charges and he ended up being fired but it created a fair bit of disarray so this company has been in the process of fixing itself up under Pat Veris's leadership and refinancing itself and getting itself restarted now what's interesting is that the original deal uh, re- allowed a uh, EMX royalty to maintain a 19.9% interest until uh, Norden Norden Crown vested, and that has happened, But and now EMX royalty is still a 13% uh, shareholder, but other people connected with with EMX royalty, such as uh, one of its big shareholders, Paul Stevens, uh, uh, they are also substantial shareholders. So this is not the usual type of relationship where uh, some third-party junior options a property, rents it, does a little pump and dump, uh, and then walks away and hands the project back to the uh, the prospect generator company. No, no, this is a serious effort to turn the Gumsberg project into something substantial. Now, the Gumsberg project lies within the Berkslagen district of Sweden. This is in southern Sweden, maybe uh, you know, a couple hundred kilometers from Stockholm. And it is famous for its high-grade VMS deposits, with silver being a very high grade. And and the, the it, some of these projects have been operating since about 1400. Generally, small-scale mine. In fact, in the northeastern part of the Gumsberg project, uh, there are about 30 historic mines, uh, small-scale mines in the Ostrasilberg area and in the Valberg area. Uh, Lower Gay area, and that's where the original efforts of the company were focused in in 27 or 2018 and 2019. But once they had acquired the original parcel, which was only a third of what the size is now, they ended up uh, recruiting Rodney Allen, who is uh, an expert on the uh, Bergslagen district uh, and has worked for had worked for Boliden for for decades, and he suggested that they expand this property to the southwest to include the Fredrickson Gruva workings, which are much more recent than the ones up in the, the Ostra area. And these are more of a SEDEX type of uh, uh, mass of sulfite deposit, zinc, lead, silver. And in the 70s, a private group had... Uh, discovered this uh, outcrop and done a 25,000-ton open pit test sample and then decided, yes, we're going to chase this. And they are, and, and they ended up mining about 45,000 tons down to a vertical depth about uh, 90 meters before giving up at the end of the 70s. And this has just sat there during this whole time. But what's interesting is that the geological context suggest that the, with the folding and metamorphism that happened uh, way back around 1.8 billion years ago, that this is a broken hill type of system. And there aren't any giant ones uh, like this in Sweden. The, the, the big ones uh, are more along the lines of the, uh, 
uh, you know, the VMS type, the volcanogenic, uh, uh, ocean bottom exhalative, which has a copper component, a gold component. These, these zinc lead silver types are the, uh, exhalative sedex types and they can become quite substantial and last year we got uh, quite excited about the potential that zephyr minerals had one of these systems at its el pomo project in colorado and the key indicator mineral there was gonite a zinc spinel which is uniquely associated with these broken hill type of systems well what pat Varis and his vp of exploration dan mckinnis uh, along with uh Rodney Allen's uh, urging uh, realized was that what people thought was just a vein type high grade system there at the Fredrickson showing was actually a broken hill type of context. So they went and got all these old holes that had been drilled around there, digitized them, and uh, and, 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 and 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 modeled it in their leapfrog system and came up with the realization that here is a potentially substantial down plunge extension of the original sort of 100,000 tons that the uh, previous operators had tackled. And this was not a geology crowd that did this. This was more a traditional contract mining group, which goes in there, follows the, uh, the zone and mines it, and then when the metal prices get too low, they give up. So they are now doing a big rethink of this play. And the first hole that they drilled... Uh, was to step about 40, 40, 45 meters down plunge from the, the, the workings to get their own proper core intervals. Now, in Sweden, uh, the law requires you, when you do exploration work, when you drill holes, you have to supply half the core to a library, which is then open to the public to examine so that people can go back into previous exploration projects that have been abandoned and, and rethink it and try again, just like uh, Norton Crown is now doing in the Fredrickson area. However, when they went and looked at all the cores, uh, well, guess what? Uh, the uh, the mass of sulfide parts had disappeared. Uh, uh, the core was in bad shape because they had used a rock splitter rather than a saw to cut the old core. And so it was very difficult to quite understand, to, to re-log it and, and do what these uh, geologists like to do. And the important thing that caught my attention in this first news release they put out last week was that uh, they now know for sure that this is stratiform mineralization. It means that, that it is not cross-cutting the geology and going to be a function of wherever the crack went. This was an exhalative type of a situation, and uh, and, and they, they, have, they have the mass of sulfites there with the the, the uh, uh, sphalerite and the galena in it. Of course, you can't see the silver because uh, that's probably hiding in the galena and you need the assays. And assays will probably take uh, six to eight weeks to get. But they are now putting together the case that this is a likely silver-enriched, uh, high-grade zinc-lead silver system, broken hill style. They've got the uh, sort of scarn-type mineralization on the... Uh, it's the hanging wall that's beneath, but it's actually the foot wall. It's actually the hanging wall because the entire system has been turned upside down. And the next stage that they realize they have to do is because there is magnetite in the part just above the mineralized mass of sulfide horizon. They now need to do some uh, local uh, mag geophysics to to see where this all goes and develop a, a plan or demonstrate to the market that this is not just going to be a you know million ton deposit like the Lovisag Grouvan deposit, which is about, uh, you know, 50, 75 kilometers to the south. You want to get something much bigger than a 1 million ton deposit of 9% zinc, 5, 5% lead, and, and 20 gram per ton silver. You want to get something substantially larger. And so this junior, um, is, is my new discovery watcher. Uh, uh, com- company to emerge from my bottom fish research. Uh, they do have a 200 million shares issued with about, you know, 70 million uh, fully diluted and with 70 million coming from warrants and options. They had to do, bite the bullet last year and do a big dilutionary financing uh, uh, down at five and a half cents and that's now free trading and the market is busy digesting it so the stock is readily available between 5 and 10 cents 
but the geological context, the approach that management is taken to demonstrate that here's a style of deposit uh, which is not unknown for Sweden, but not something that anybody has really looked for in the southwestern part of this this, this large property where they stake the, the western two-thirds uh, based on Rodney Allen's suggestion that there may be a lot more going on than in the highly explored northeastern corner. This is something that we should watch for for 2021 Norden Crown's uh, uh, Gumsberg project with the focus on the Fred, old Fredrickson workings and the possibility that this is a broken hill type of system that has undergone gone enrichment through the remobilization created by the metamorphic forces uh, 1.8 million billion years ago. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after the break. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, did your bottom fish research flag any new rare earth stories for Discovery Watch? Jim, one of the companies that shouldn't be classified as a bottom fish, but because of its circumstances still qualifies as a bottom fish, is Defense Metals Corp. Now, this company uh, it, what was a shell in, in, in late uh, 2018 uh, when it acquired the Wichita project or an option on the Wichita project and this is in the on on the British Columbia side of the Rocky Mountains uh um sort of you know not pretty much sort of central central BC this project was uh discovered around uh, 2007 2008 by a private group uh, uh called the Spectrum Group and it its shareholders are made of a group of Prince George people uh uh, chief amongst them being the principals be- behind Falcon Drilling, a, a drilling contractor company, and they did they they basically missed rare, rare Earth Mania 1.0, which unfolded between 2009 to 2011, because they were still a private company. They did their work, and then all of a sudden the bubble was over. Rare Earth prices collapsed to levels worse than they were before Rare Earth Mania 1.0. Uh, kicked off, uh, but they eventually decided to do this deal where uh, the shell company would be able to earn 51% by spending $1.9 million over uh, three years, and that deadline is November of 2021, and issue some, some stock and pay, pay some cash, and they have done more than that, maybe 25% more. But the hitch with this deal is once they've vested for 51%, they must issue enough stock to acquire full 100% by issuing enough stock to give the Spectrum Group 49% of the resulting company. And you can argue whether this should be done on the issued or the fully diluted. There's all these uh, fine details. And right now there's about 77 million uh, shares fully diluted, and if you use that as the hard number, you would basically double it to about $155 million of million shares fully diluted. And then that would imply at the current sort of 33 price cent price a $50 million value for the Wichita deposit. Now, this is an interesting story for Discovery Watch because this is the second richest light rare earth deposit in North America after Mountain Pass. Now, Mountain Pass is about 19 
million tons of 7% rare earths, and the distribution is very similar to that of, of the Wichita deposit, that the key mineral is basnesite. The uh, processing uh, characteristics for basnesite are fairly well understood. That's also the key mineral in the Bionobo giant uh, in China. Um, and the current rock value at the metal price, rare earth prices that we have today, uh, on a 100% separated basis, it's a it's about $360 for the Wichita ore and $927 per ton for Mountain Pass. So Mountain Pass is two to three times richer than the Wichita deposit. But Mountain Pass itself is going to have a fixed throughput capacity. And the big story now is that the electric vehicle expansion is happening much faster than anybody anticipated. And you're starting to see lithium uh, go up. It's gone from two sixty uh, uh, to two dollars and sixty cents a, a pound of lithium carbonate to, to four dollars. That's still a long ways from the twelve to fifteen dollars a pound that we had in, in 2016, 2017, when everybody first got excited about the, uh, the electric vehicle uh, expansion potential. And one of our show sponsors, Cypress Cypress Minerals. Uh, it's gone rocketed to as high as a dollar sixty after languishing down there at thirty, thirty, fifty cents forever, based on the Clayton Valley resource that it has established, which is a bedrock resource as opposed to a, a brine resource such as is being processed uh, by the neighboring uh, neighboring company. So there is a lot of interest now in where are these materials going to come from, and. After the rare earth mania 1.0 bust, everybody kind of forgot about the rare earths that they are critical to hybrids and electric vehicles. Now, now what's really interesting about both Mountain Pass and Wichita is that uh, 90% of that rock value that I just quoted, uh, $360 and 927 based on current current uh, rare earth prices is attributable to the price of neodymium and paseodymium, the key rare earth that goes into these magnets. Now, neither of these deposits have any dysprosium or terbium to speak of. These are the heavy rare earths which are used as dopants in these magnets to prevent these, the magnetism to decay from decaying under higher operating temperatures. For these heavy rare earths, you still have to go to China's ion absorption clay deposits. And the future is uh, from bedrock deposits such as uh, Namibia Critical Metals uh, uh, Loftal Project in, uh, in Namibia, in which the, the Japanese now have their mitts, and uh, the Nora Char deposit in Sweden controlled by uh, Leading Edge Materials. Both of these companies are current KRO favorites, and I believe we have talked about them in the past on Discovery Watch also. But here is an old-fashioned carbonatite, 3% um, uh, rare, light rare earth story. It's a substantial resource. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be bigger than just 17 million, million tons. And they are at the stage where they believe they can deliver a PEA by the second quarter of this year. The next stage is the most critical one for all rare earth stories, and that's the uh, the metallurgy for the cracking stage, where you literally dissolve the rare earths, uh, put them into solution, precipitate them out into a mixed powder, and then you end up separating them into their basic constituents that go into the various applications. And they figure that the next stage is going to cost two to three million dollars to do the hydro metallurgy. They've already made significant process in creating a concentrate where, where you crush and use, crush the material and use various separation techniques to, to pull out the material that uh, doesn't contain any rare earths. In fact, that is all that MP materials is doing right now. It is, uh, uh turning the mountain pass ore into a uncracked concentrate and shipping it to China for both cracking and separation. And if there ever turns into a, a big fuss develops between China and the United States over a place such as Taiwan, 
uh, that's going to be a significant problem because the Chinese are not going to be shipping back or even accepting these rare earths. And MP materials is still a year away from having its facility at Mountain Pass properly operational, cracking its own ore and separating it so that it can supply these the, the neodymium and the praseodymium to, to magnet factories who can then make it for the Teslas and, and everybody else who doesn't want to source their supply from China. And this is an important point because the whole ESG movement is really gaining extraordinary momentum. If Tesla wants to show that uh, uh, its materials come from relatively clean sources, they can't source those materials from China because the China price is by definition dirty. The country is completely untrustworthy because it does not allow any media criticism of anything. So whatever the government says is completely unreliable. So China will never be able to compete in the ESG arena in terms of saying, here were the conditions that this material was made of, here's the carbon dioxide footprint, here's the the, the human health and safety footprint and all that. That's never going to happen for a Chinese Chinese product. So defense metals is very interesting to me because this is a significant resource. It still needs to have some metallurgical work to confirm for a you know, feasibility level that this should be put into production, but it would be a second major source in North America for the light rare earths needed to make these magnets. The big missing piece is wrapping up this 49% uh, piece that they don't own yet. Uh, uh, CEO Craig Taylor is, is looking at ways of how to execute this. The market would like to give them lots of money to speed along the metallurgical studies and get this thing beyond PEA into the pre-feasibility stage so that the development decision could be made sooner than later. But the market also doesn't like the uncertainty of a formula where the amount of paper that has to be issued to wrap up 100% is basically the uh, uh, based on the amount of stock outstanding. So the company is right now getting these warrants exercised. Uh, last week, some European investors uh, put out uh, recommendations uh, on the stock, so that helped it get above 30 cents. So the pulling in money to uh, from, from from getting all these these warrants that have been a bit of an overhang on the stock. But they should have enough money to move forward. But before they get serious attention from investment bankers looking for an alternative to MP materials, which right now is sporting a U.S. $5 billion valuation for its mountain pass facility compared to a implied $50 million Canadian valuation for Wichita, uh, this has got to be one of the cheapest uh, alternative, reasonably advanced light rare earth projects uh, out there in, in North America, and that's why we're making Defense Metals one of our Discovery Watch stocks to pay attention to in 2021. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, will Harfeng Exploration finally drill a target in 2021? You know, that sounds like a strange question to ask, but it is a very serious question. This company has been around since 2017 when it took over some shell and uh, became the vehicle for Francois Goulet in the 
in, in the northern Quebec area or more the, the central northern Quebec area called the James Bay region. And during that period, he has not drilled a single property. I first introduced Harfang uh, to Discovery Watch in 2019 when the um, the Myth Midlands Mithril copper play was going. Uh, the Serpent Project had some copper showings uh, in it, and there was hope that the there might be a copper boom in the James Bay region. That has pretty much fizzled out at this stage. But the Serpent Project uh, has continued to grow, and it has mutated into a significant gold play. Now, in that region, Quebec Precious Metals, which we've also talked about on Discovery Watch, it has the uh, the La Pointe uh, gold project. It's a sort of a lower-grade bulk tonnage mineable gold system uh, where we're still waiting for the uh, original, uh, the initial resource estimate to show us what sort of grade and geometry this resource is going to have. But what uh, Francois Goulet started to find when they did till sampling in the area was an abundance of gold grains in the western part of the Serpent property, ultimately projecting onto a uh, the Radisson property that La Salle Exploration uh, uh, owned from, from a number of years ago when they were chasing a, a sort of a nickel copper PGM magmatic type of a type of target. And till sampling involves on a grid going out there and augering down to close to the bedrock, uh, get a basal till sample, uh, make a concentrate out of it. And then you pick the gold grains out of it if there aren't any, and then mash up an even smaller concentrate and get a geochemical assay from this. And then you just plot this up on your map and look for patterns. And in this case, the pattern started to evolve close to and south of what they call the stew structure, which is some sort of magnetic feature, which Francois believes is a structural break that might have a you know, deep roots, um, capacity to bring up fluids. And it's all coming down to the south. There's nothing north of it. The samples north of it uh, are pretty much dead. And so what they have is this, you know, five-kilometer long apron uh, extending from the south of this structural break. They've got some high-grade uh, gold in quartz, uh, you know, values that go up to 100, 150 uh, grams per ton gold, so it's different from the um, Quebec Precious Metals uh, La Point system where the, the, the grades rarely get above five, six grams per ton. Here you get some spectacular high grades, but the area is covered by mostly overburden, and also there is this big swamp that's just to the south of this stew structure, and of course they have no data from this swamp. And last year, they decided to do some, uh, uh, you know, sampling, reconnaissance sampling well beyond the proper boundaries. This led them to finding some high-grade showings to the northwest of the LaSalle property, so they staked that. And now they've done even more thinking about what's going on here. And they realized that uh, these, these Gabbro intrusions appear to have a st structural relationship with uh, the gold mineralization and so they've been looking uh, over a much broader area for evidence of these mafic intrusions. And they just announced yesterday staking a substantial uh, land position. They made their, their claim even larger towards the northwest and uh, staked this peculiar backward C-shaped group of claims, uh, uh, which actually connects to its original Lake uh, Martinaca uh, project where they started off in, in 2017. And the reason for the big hole in the middle is they can see the the, the pink granite uh, in these areas uh, with with no nothing in the regional uh, magnetic survey suggesting any sort of structures or anything. So they've left alone what appears to be the equivalent of the uh, Sierra Nevada, like a big giant uh, granite intrusion that has zero potential for mineralization. So they've expanded this to to a considerably larger district play. Um, they are getting in their final, uh, you know, uh, 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 concentrate results. They've already got all their, their gold grain, picked gold grain results back, and, and, and they clearly see that this is coming from the stew structure area. And they are now doing an IP survey. They won't have the full results until mid 
February, but they plan to be drilling by the start of February in the area of the swamp because they know there's something going on. It's a gap in their data. Uh, the fact that it's a swamp is likely due to uh, the ground being being far more structurally prepared than other parts, which is good for fluid flow and deposition of gold mineralization. And, of course, they have the down ice evidence that something is going on. So they'll be drilling some fences or scout holes just to find out the geology. That'll also give them some better understanding of the uh, how the, how the structure behaves. But the the very large gold anomaly, the, the rethinking of this is a different style of mineralization for this area that hasn't really been recognized in the past. I think Harfang exploration is going to be the uh, star of 2021, which is why I took it from its bottom fish status, where it kind of deserved to stay, because all it ever did was uh, sampling and prospecting and never got around to drilling. I've elevated it to a favorite. Uh, uh, it will become a, a good spec value rated stock the instant they drill something and show that, okay, here's the gold in three dimensions. Uh, this is where all the gold and till is coming from. And then this stock, which has been financed by Quebec Inc. and that sort of 35 cents uh, for hard dollars uh, units and 55 cents for flow through. They now have eight to nine million dollar war chest, only 75 million shares fully diluted and 100 percent ownership of all this land, no royalties. This is all grassroots generated and staked. Uh, so this company has the potential to do very, very well, and perhaps finally get for the James Bay region the respect that not even the Eleanor mine has attracted for this region, which has an awful lot of potential, but yet no really off-the-scale, world-class uh, 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 metal discovery. John, thank you so much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been speaking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.